What Sculpt Your Life is a biannual event, and this year there are 26 contestant cards. The logs come in all shapes and sizes, and could be redwood, macrocarpa, oak, holly oak or cowrie. The logs are balloted. No carver knows exactly which log will be his until the ballot, so preconceived ideas are not necessarily useful. Ingenuity, inspiration, as well as chainsaw and chisel skills are the priority. This year the carvers are mainly Kiwis, but there is a Russian who migrated to New Zealand in 2001 and a New Caledonian Kanak. These carvers are very experienced. Most of them have skills in working with other mediums, such as stone, glass, steel, bone and panamu, and at least one of them has his own foundry for casting bronze. Amongst the carvers, there is one who has the distinction of selling 94% of his work offshore. Alex, um, I know you get the logs balloted, don't you? Yeah. Were you happy with the log you got? Yeah. First choice? Uh, one of, of two, which are left for me. One was the oak, and the other one was this. But I think it was a good decision to not to take oak. <laughs> I'm looking for another island to pull up. Normally my genre is animals, but this is more like a female form and it just happened to be in the tree and you know being a boat the first thing I noticed was there was a pair of boobies. But I'm looking further and see what a beautiful throat she has. And I don't know what else might develop from that, but it's all in the tree. I'm not shifting it around too much, it's already there. by Labyrinth and uh, the growth of crystals like this one. What are you doing this year, John? Uh, well, I'm doing something uh, that it, I got motivated by um, seeing the autumn leaves falling in my garden and tiptoeing in their darts across the garden uh, and uh, I um, started gathering leaves and uh, this is, this is uh, one of the samples that I uh, picked on and um, 
hopefully it is influencing what I'm doing here. So it's basically a leaf, but uh, hopefully you see more than a leaf, you'll see a little bit of humanity in, the, in this leaf. Joe, you're putting on a bit of a slimming job there, are you? On the piece or myself? Uh, on the piece, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do what to her what I want done to me. Have you lost a bit of weight yourself? Have you lost a bit of weight yourself then? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I've gained some weight. But yeah, yeah, she's slowly slimming out. If the mask don't look too intimidating, I'll leave it to you. But if it does, I might just take it off and get the mic for you. It soaks the seat in the end, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's sort of like, um, like a storytelling seat, you know? Some big, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I plan to do two of them, just to balance, balance out. My plan was to do a big long lounge chair when I come, but there's already a couple of big chairs getting done. Peter, I can see you're um, building a seat of some kind, but I understand that you've had a bit of a problem. Well, I've got this um, wee nail here, which is uh, about 10 mil thick. <laughs> but last time I had uh, eight nails, so I've only had one this time, so. Much happier. <laughs> so, would it have ruined your chainsaw? Oh yeah, it does a bit of damage to the chain. It will slow me down, but it won't stop me. <laughs> I can't believe it, but um, you tell me it's four years since you won. Yep, since that last one, yeah. Are you happy with the log you got this time? Yeah, I am actually. It's redwood and it lasts very well outside, so it's actually the first time I've worked redwood. And I've been told that you've had a few problems with nails, is that true? Yeah, I've had a few nails. had about five nails in this one. Well, that's not too good. Does it do a lot of damage to the chainsaw? It does, yeah. It blunts your chainsaw almost instantly. Quite often can knock teeth off. Um, yeah, it's like one of the worst things you could actually get in the log. Finishing touches, Steve? Uh, not quite. I'll go over it all with the black and then I'll sand back the high ridges so I can bring the wood through. I just thought, looking at it, I thought it was almost finished. I thought to myself, golly, he's going to be done before Terry Haynes. <laughs> yeah, not quite. I'm painting over the red because when I sand back through the wood, the red fleck will come through the black.
Peter, it looks like you've uh, roughed out the chase lines. Are you going to do any intricate carving or anything on it later? Well, if there's time, I'm still working on the fineness of the lines and getting the, the curves and shapes absolutely perfect. That's quite a long process. So uh, if there's time, I'll get some detailing in, but at this stage, I'm not sure. Terry, so you've always been uh, first to finish uh, every year because you have to move what the other people stuff with your truck. Is it going to be the same this year? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, it'll be the same because I've got a race off to my mother's 80th birthday this year. But, uh, so, but normally, yeah, I've got to move everybody's work with the truck. I see there's one guy, he's so, <laughs> he's so, so finished he's actually started doing a second man. The yeah, guy, yeah, the well, he, had, he had two bits of wood to start with, so. yeah. I said to him ages ago that why don't you do two? Yeah. Amazing, eh? Yeah. Perkis Ilex, native to the southern Mediterranean and it's been introduced to England in the 1600s and now it's everywhere in England. See you've had a bit of a uh, problem there. There's a power wire growing through the tree so that's copper which is not really too much of a problem. This is my drawing, it's off a, it's off a wood cut and um, I had to sort something out on the log, right? So that's that size and the, the, this piece here was enough wood, so we've got that and there wasn't enough wood there for the tail. I considered adding something but I thought nah, so that's less that. And this is the other side which is reverse of it. There you go. So it's, it's a zooplankton, happy in the sea. Looks a little bit like a sort of serpent, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's um, seven segments plus um, like a seaweed haircut, you know, so that's basically it. <laughs> you know, you can sit on it or climb on it or ride it. or It'll be, it's to be fun. It's such a serious, it's very serious thing. I've um, come here to add a bit of fun to your cultural landscape. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Phil, this is a pretty massive project. What's it likely to end up as? Um, it's going to end up as a an upright, standing up that way, um, tree with uh, figures coming out of it where the main branches were. Tentative title of the, the flower people. And um, I'm just going with the flow. I didn't have a plan with this one, just going with what I see in the tree. Well, of course you don't. I mean, the logs are bulleted, so you can't really uh, predetermine anything, can you? Well, you can. I did have various plans for other logs, but in the end, I chose this one, which didn't uh, suit my plan. So, yeah, a different one, approach. One or two people have had uh, problems with nails and things like that. Have you had that? Yes. Uh, if anyone's watching this, spread the word. Never put a nail in a tree. For one thing, I mean, the tree won't like it. Uh, for another, you may forget to take it out, or maybe you never intended to, but someone like me with a chainsaw in years to come is going to wreck their chain and curse whoever put the nail in that tree. So, um, yeah, it's a good idea. This is the second one I found with my saw, and, then, and the fifth one I pulled out of this particular tree. Joe, I, I see you're roughing, well, you're roughing out of the face there. How long before you start carving? Um, I'll, I'll get into it straight away. 
next uh, probably the next five minutes I'll start the pace. But I see you've got a bit of assistance from this Osh man here, holding yeah, the ladder for yeah, you. Yeah, Jim, Jim, he's been helping me all the way through. Moral this, support. This was going to be a flower, but Jim suggested it should be a head. See, ladies are a bit sparse on the grounds this year, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know why that is. Um, well, I know why Anna didn't come. Her cat got sick. <laughs> so, she couldn't put it in the cattery. And she lives in New Plymouth now? You know Anna? Yeah, Steve's her partner. Yeah, yeah. Steve Malloy, yeah. yeah. So, have you got a name for this, Lauren? plant form from the, the inspiration is a photographer actually called Carl Vlasfeld and he used nature as um, inspiration for his um, photography and he, he saw the pieces he saw things in nature as works of art and he could photograph them like that and they're very sculptural usually plants but they're really unusual looking plants and they have very long Latin names that I can't pronounce. On Wednesday, roughly two thirds of the way through the competition, Auckland's weather deteriorated into heavy rain and a small tent city materialised. Some tools were abandoned and the car was stood down. But as soon as the sun shone again, Davy sat down and carried on. The rain hasn't put you off at all? A lot. It has. Pretty much over it today. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop now. Just about there. You've nearly finished, have you? No. But I'm not sure if I will. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Had some elves help him before. You had some what? Some children from the holidays came over and stopped and had a few whacks with a chisel. Oh, really? Quite good. So if you win, will you give them credit? <laughs> as long as it's not financial credit, yeah. Have you got a, a name in mind for the piece? Uh, keyless ignition, or no keys in the ignition, something like that. Okay. With a name like Satchel, where are you from? Uh, I was born in England. My parents need some Russians, so that's how I got the name. Grew up in Gisborne. Married a Greek. Wow. Weather hasn't put you off, Alex. Huh? I say the weather hasn't put you off at all. No, maybe just a little bit. Slows me down. Is the wood any? Has the wood got wet at all? Yeah, a little bit, you know. But it doesn't. Moisture doesn't really go in the wood. Okay. Yeah. It probably would if you were sanding, eh? Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to sand. Want you? No, it's gonna. It's sharp chisel. Give her a knife, rough. Nice yeah, rough I like, texture. I like human touch, you know? Yeah. Like every bit is touched by chisel. Hello ladies. Hello. 
What are you up to? Yeah, what is, is it, it going to be? It's the air. Oh, so awesome. Yep. So you've got to have it all in balance for the tree to grow. Too much sun and it'll die. Too much rain and it'll die. Too much wind and it'll fall over. Yep. So the name of it's called harmony, which means oh, balance. Nice thing, yeah. So everything's got to be in balance for the tree to grow. So now you've got it standing up. Are those angel wings up there? You're sort yeah. of like a naked angel, eh? Uh, it's a goddess, actually. Okay. It's, uh, before angels, probably. <laughs> There's a ball inside the ball there. How in the land of heaven did you carve that? A uh, chainsaw. Just a, a bunch of sponge cuts with the chainsaw. Then we got around, just keep working at it. Little cuts, little cuts, little cuts, and then eventually it frees up. It's a bit like the uh, Russian doll concept, isn't it? You know, a doll inside a doll, a um, ball inside a ball. Yeah, sort of. Uh, um, that wasn't on my thinking when I did it. Chris, um Last time I was here, you really didn't have an idea what this was going to be in the finish. Have you come to any conclusion? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a whale of some sort, and this is any other uh, animals in the ocean. And maybe a bit of wildlife there. It's just slowly coming out. It just evolves over time, I say. Are you anywhere near the finishing? Uh, getting close. Just going hard out for the last day or so, half day and a half, but yeah, just trying to block it all out. This looks a bit like uh, sort of finishing touches. Ah, uh, yeah, well, we've only got tomorrow to go, so really, uh, yeah, no, um, I'm on target to finish it tomorrow. Uh, and I need to get my colour scheme here just how I want it to match in with the with the grain. So I'll roll it up. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a slow process. This <laughs> Glenn, um, these two pieces look like they might be, um, you know, a sort of a jigsaw, then they fit together. Yeah, they are, yeah. I've cut a, first of all, I made a big, uh, long cigar shaped sort of uh, piece, and then I drew a pattern over the top of it with big swirling lines, and then dropped the chainsaw through and separated the two pieces of wood. So, what I'm going to do with them eventually is fit them back together again on a stainless steel pole, and I've got some engineering pieces that a friend of mine's made up. I'm going to drill through the pieces of uh, wood themselves and go into the central pole and then stand it up so the two pieces are separated by it by a bit of a margin of sometimes this, sometimes that. Yeah, and the two pieces are, it's called Synergy 
and it talks about the uh, the wave of energy between two particular forms or two particular ideas and how they work in together with each other. Peter, it's Thursday. I sort of thought you'd be finished and lying on the chase line by now. Well, but yeah, no, well into it. Um, still working on the form to get it absolutely perfect. Getting all this beautiful grain out. You can see through here we've had these incredible grain patterns. You can't hurry things in art. Well, you can try when you're young, but you'll soon give it up. So uh, I'm really happy with where I'm at, and uh, I know that I do the piece justice by finishing it properly. That's super. I, I'm fascinated by the grain on the end. Uh, um, is that is that from the branches? That, um... Yeah, yeah. One thing about Norfolk is its regularity, the dispersal of the of the radial arms. So there's this rhythm. So I've tried to work with that rhythm. But what's happened on the end with that star pattern is really exciting. So I hoped I'd get something like that, but it's beyond my dreams. It's really, really good. Yeah, I really like it. It's unusual. Yeah, it's going to look great when it's polished up. Starting this time, weren't you? Oh, I was pretty late starting last time, too. Yeah, do you yeah. think you're going to get it finished? Yeah, yeah, it'll be done. It'll be pretty well knocked out by the end of the day tomorrow. So, just finishing on Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, one day before the judgment, and competitors are making last minute adjustments, looking for the best angles to display their work. Kiki Rubila's new Caledonian star piece, intricately carved, is one of the first to be erected into its final position. Ron Welch is still trimming his female form. And John Ferguson Sleeve has finally emerged from the tent which has been its home for the last week. The two chase lounges were both in position, though Peter Barr and Norman were still contemplating oiling his piece. You decided against oiling it, Peter? Ah, uh, jury's out at this stage, we'll see how the finish goes. Oh, um, you've still got time, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just, what can I say? It's rained five times today. <laughs> 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 it makes you wonder whether they hold this competition at the right time of the year, doesn't it? Oh yeah, a few months earlier would be a lot better in my, my life, but uh, it's a reasonable result. I'll just do some more finishing after it's over, so that's okay. I think you can get the basic idea and people seem to like it, so I guess I've done my job.
A side had been found for Davy's seesaw, but there was still time for a few finishing touches. Joe Kemp's sculpture was in its final position, but he was still up the ladder, chiselling the way. Thought you'd be finished by now, Joe. <laughs> uh, um, no. No, no, if, if I had another day, I'd still be carving, but um, I'm almost there. So it's, um, it's good enough to be judged tomorrow, I think. Chris as well was getting a bit of a fine polish too. Certainly looking like a whale now, Chris. Yes, yes. You happy with it? Uh, yeah, having a whale of a time, uh, getting it finished I suppose. Weather's alright today. Well, the weather's been atrocious, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all part of it though, eh? Well, it makes you wonder whether they hold this uh, competition at the right time of the year, doesn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Either, I'd say in summer might be too hot. It'll be half asleep. Yeah. Is your first time? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Very nice. One of Chris Moore's figures had been moved so many times that he'd got a little tired and decided to have a bit of a nap. Alexei had decided to find his goddess and take a little off the buttocks. Almost finished, Alexei? Yes. Few more touches and ready to go. Sacha had found a new area with better cover from the morning rain and was busy waxing his work. So you finally got under cover a wee bit, Sacha? Undercover someone else's. <laughs> it's a bit windy for my one, it turns inside out. And... Peter Rear Lady was finishing off his lizard. Peter is renowned for his carvings of beers, so the lizard is quite a departure from his usual style. Looking for the beers this year, where are they? We didn't get a good enough log. Okay. Big enough log, otherwise I would have made. I would have made a couple of beers. Yeah. Are you happy with this one though? Hey? Are you happy yeah, with this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a week's work, so it is. Looks good, doesn't it? Oh. It looks good to <laughs> People think the public like it. They recognise it, they know what it is. Well, I think it's a lizard, isn't it? <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glenn Davis was quite busy, visualising the bottom half of his two-part work in the upright position. Maurice Van Kooten's huge piece, originally tentatively called Labyrinth, was also being moved into position, drawing quite a few spectators. And Maurice watched patiently as it was lowered into its pre-prepared spot. Is it still called Labyrinth? Uh, no, I've changed the title. It's called Emerging Cities. So it's 
inspired by um, how a crystal grows, this is crystal. And um, what I like about that is that it's got Aztec temples in it. When you look at it, it kind of steps out and it grows. And um, it reminds me of like early civilizations. Satchel was getting lots of advice from the bystanders, but finally he found a position that he liked. And goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Paul Brunton was busy doing a little scorching of his inner ball. Why are you doing that? Don't you like it? No, it's a, it's, well, wood fires traditionally used as a preservative technique on wood. Oh, so, really? Yeah, it kills all the spores and moulds and the, the surface you create the carbon surface, which things don't like growing on. Um, helps water protect it, stops the bugs going in, bugs don't like going through the carbon. Creates a great colour, great effect, raises the grain. Lots of reasons for burning it. And I like fire. John Ferguson's autumn room was finding a more permanent position and John was getting advice from all quarters. John, I think we're happy. I see. You've had plenty of advice. Has it reached its final resting place? Oh, you need this advice. <laughs> Especially when the boss gives you the, the right advice. I always thought autumn leaves just stayed where they fell. <laughs> yeah, some of them don't. Some of them get up and dance. Anyway, it's looking good, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah. Would have been a lot better if you'd put it just here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Keep people the mood, don't you? <laughs> so do you put it up on YouTube? Yeah. What? You can look at me on YouTube. I never really thought you would ever finish that, you know? <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> never underestimate a man with a chainsaw. Okay, okay.
Have you seen your favourite? Yes, I have. Which one is it? It's number 18, that one there. Okay. It's just called Red Rips, Redwood Resurrected. Fabulous. And uh, have you, what sort of prices on that, do you know? 10,000. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, a lot of work, isn't it? And it's an artist's work, and it's beautiful, so I'm sure someone would pay for that. Oh, you do one for me too? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll take one for our wedding. Oh, okay. Did you feel that? And? Look, hold on just a minute. Looking up, hold on. Another thing. You've got a favourite? Have you seen one that you really like? I certainly did like the one by John Ferguson, the autumn. What do you call it? Autumn leaf tiptoes into winter but oh there's just so many to choose from I mean they're just amazing and it just oh, I don't know make you feel so good really in the, in the outdoors in the garden and so we're going to have to really uh, see what we can do about uh, council's art budget because some of these would be so wonderful to have around you know especially the seats I love those market carpet seats and apparently they've been sold to China so there's some really lovely work here isn't it oh, Incredible, but the, and the creativity, I mean, it's just something you never saw in New Zealand a few years ago, wasn't it? It's just, it's just incredible. On to the judging. This year we're lucky enough to have Rob Garrett as our judge. Rob's a well-respected and experienced curator, both internationally and nationally, and is perhaps most well-known for his masterful curating of the New Zealand Sculpture on Shore event held in Devonport every year. We've already congratulated the artists, but I, it just to take a little bit of time to think about the conditions under which they've made these works. Uh, I don't believe that the artists got to choose the wood that they were going to work with. There was a ballot. And then they worked under a very, very constrained time frame, as well as somebody was saying they had at least two and a half days of wet weather that they couldn't work in. So the weather's been a bit, a bit pressured. So the work is not produced in the ideal circumstances that they would normally produce their work. And under those circumstances, for us to see the amazing variety and quality of works in this exhibition, I think alone deserves a huge round of applause for our artists. <laughs> As a judge, it was quite a difficult task. And um, it, I had to think long and hard about those that particularly interested me, moved me, I thought had really captured something and I ended up with too long a list to give prizes to. So um, 
I'll, I'll make a point of going and talking to the artists and, and giving them some feedback about what I really thought about their work and how, it, how those works, works moved me. But in the end, I was asked to choose three. So there's a Supreme Award and first and second runner-up. And I'm going to begin with the second runner-up. The second runner-up in this year's uh, sculpture exhibition are uh, the two figures by Chris Moore. Emerging artist, if you like. I'm not sure if he's going to appreciate the way I describe him and his work. But he also told me a couple of years ago, we worked together in Sculpture and Shaw, that he's just begun to work on figures. So, and I've, been, I've had the pleasure of seeing some of the figure works that he's made and seeing a journey, what I think is going to be a really strong journey beginning to emerge. And these two figures are for me the best that I've seen him produce in his figure work. And they, um, for, this, for this kind of site, they present us with life-size figures that we can stand next to or between and form a relationship with. So that was one of the really striking features of this work. They're real characters, they've got real attitude, and there's a little bit of a political and um, I think a sort of a, a current theme edge to the work as well. So congratulations, Chris. This is another pair. This is the work by Glenn Davis, and this is at the other end of the spectrum. Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis is normally working in stone, and if you look at the very, very abstract forms that are down this end of the park, his two very abstract forms, he's approached the timber in some ways a little bit like stone, and it is a very, very highly, highly smooth finish, these, these abstract works, but he's allowed the life of the timber, the wood itself, to breathe and speak as well. This task was quite difficult in the rain. Uh, finishing, finish, as you'll see, that many of the sculptures sculptors have tried to produce a very particular finish to the timber because that's been required by the form that they've been working on and under the circumstances of the weather we've had this this period has been quite tricky but what i really liked about the work was that again there are two forms that you can stand between and walk around and they they're of a human scale so you get a sense of intimacy with them as well but there's a beautiful inside and outside form here the negative space inside these and when you spend some time in the works, I think works that really move me are things that give me a bit of an after an image or an afterburn. It's, it's, they creep up on you. And lastly, I think uh, judging an art competition is um, partly, uh, you know, I should, be, I should be able to pick really good works, good quality works, that, um, a very fine example of a particular genre, but a large part of it is what really affects me. And in that sense, it's quite subjective. I'm just one person. And um, I would expect that as you walk around the exhibition, you will probably find the work that affects you most. It may be because it delights you or makes you laugh. It may be because it makes you remind you of something. Um, it may be it's the one work that you want to run your hands over. Whatever it is that strikes you as the thing that you will take home a lasting memory. So that's what I'm looking for in the Supreme Award, the one that really moves me the most. And I would like to congratulate Joe Kemp for winning the Supreme Award. Like all really good works of art, this should give you something over and over again and keep giving. And I think that this work, and you'll see it behind you over here uh, with the fields behind it, and you'll see that this work is, um, I think the qualities that I really like about this work, clearly this is a figure. Uh, this is a woman's figure and we, we it's very, very difficult to carve a figure out of a trunk of timber. And what we find is that Joe has used the properties of the timber in the expression of the figure. So this, have a look at this and have a look at the details, the way he's used the grain of the timber. And then have a look at the way there is a knot in the timber from where a branch protruded from the trunk and it corresponds exactly with the woman's belly button. So this whole idea of capturing the sense of latent growth, of past offspring, um, of future growth, and just beautifully graphically expressed by bringing out that knot. And then as you walk around the figure, you'll find that the figure is hollow, and this hollowed out belly of the woman is again about the promise of birth, but it's also a very practical seat. Um, I'm, I'm ready. This is fantastic. Isn't this the second year on the running? Second year in a row. Yeah. I, I won't come next time.
Oh, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but second year in a row, I'm, I'm bloody wrapped and, um, you know, grateful for, for all the sponsorship, all this um, hard work that's put, put down before us so we can come in and do our mahi. So, very, um, very privileged.